At first glance, you may think that this subwoofer enclosure is a ported style box. But take note that this box doesn't really have an airspace. In fact, it appears to be all port. This, my friends, is the quarter wave transmission line subwoofer style enclosure. Known for its ability to have a low flat frequency response for even small subwoofers, this is really a unique design style. So how can we design this transmission line enclosure and what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using this in a car audio environment? That, my friends, is coming up. Hey, what's going on? I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. And as you can see, I'm currently about halfway through building this transmission line enclosure. I actually just posted a picture of this on my Instagram account, Car Audio Fab, and a bunch of you guys were asking about some of the specifics of the design, so I figured why not make a video. In this video, I wanna talk about some of the concepts behind this enclosure and some basic math. And then in a separate upcoming video, you'll be able to see how I built this thing Thing step by step. Now a quick disclaimer, I just want to emphasize that the math that I'm going to cover in this video is really just the sheer basics of getting started with a T-line box. A T-line box is really the type of enclosure that in order to really optimize it, you need to do some adjustments after you're done building the enclosure. We can talk about this a little bit more later. In the meantime, let's start with talking about some of the values that we're going to need about our subwoofer. So to start, there's a few different TS or Tele small parameters that we need to get from the subwoofer. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Tele small parameters are, I actually have a full video about it, link up in the corner of the screen. The first parameter that we're gonna need is the FS, which is the subwoofer's free air resonant frequency. I'm actually gonna pick some real world values as we go along here, just for clarity's sake. So in this case, we'll say 33 Hertz. Next up, we need the SD, which is the effective cone area of the subwoofer. And this is another value that the manufacturer will provide. When you get the SD, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you know what the units are for it in this case. So in my case, it's 53.5 square inches. Now something else that you wanna make sure that you pay attention to are the actual measurements of the subwoofer itself. The overall diameter, the cut diameter, and the mounting depth are something that you're gonna need for any style of box, but they're going to be important to note in the case of a T-line because the T-line port cross-sectional area is so important. We wanna make sure that we have enough height for the subwoofer to actually mount, and we also wanna make sure we have enough depth within the box for the subwoofer to actually mount. And these two values can control and have an impact on the port cross-sectional area. Next, we need to actually know the speed of sound. And in my case, since I'm here in the United States, I'm gonna know the speed of sound in feet per second. It's approximately 1130 feet per second. Depending on your altitude and where you are in the world, this value can actually change a little bit. So it can actually change the tuning of your subwoofer enclosure but it really doesn't change enough to have any sort of major impact on the performance of the box. If you guys are somewhere where you're using metric, just use the metric part of this equation, but you just wanna keep in mind that if you're using meters per second, the value that we're gonna get from this is going to be in meters rather than feet. So we know all this, let's go through the math here. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take 1130 and we're going to divide it by the free air resonance of 33 in this case. So 1130 divided by 33, this is about 34 and a quarter. What this calculation is actually giving us is the wavelength of a 33 hertz wave. And in this case, it would be 34 and a quarter feet long. What we're gonna do is, is since this particular style of design is based on quarter wave theory, we're gonna divide this by four. So 34.25 divided by four is 8.56. And remember, this is feet. So at this point, I'm gonna to convert to inches. So I'm gonna multiply by 12. So this gives me 102.75 inches. Now, what is this value? This is actually how long we want the port to be within the subwoofer enclosure. Let's put a star next to that value because that's the first important value that helps define the design of our enclosure. Now the next value we need to use is SD, which once again is the effective cone area. So remember in our example, we have 53.5 square inches. So what this is gonna define is this is actually gonna define the port 
cross-sectional area. So in other words, let's say we have our port, like so. We already know that it's gonna be about 102 inches long, and obviously this isn't to scale. But what this is right here, this is the port cross-sectional area. So in other words, if you have the height and then the width, height times width gives you area. So we know that we want whatever this is, the height times the width, we want it to equal 53.5 inches squared. Now this here is why it's critical to know the dimensions of your subwoofer. I know that I need that height, because let's say that the subwoofer is also on the front face of this box. I know that I need that height inside there to be at least nine inches, otherwise the cutout of that subwoofer isn't gonna quite fit on there. In fact, I want it to actually probably be a little bit more. So let's say we use 9.75 inches for the height of the port and we have the width, which is our variable, and then we know that it needs to equal 53.5. So if we just do some algebra here, we know we can divide each side by 975 to cancel it out. So 975. This equals approximately five and a half inches. So now we know that our width needs to be five and a half inches, and we know that our height needs to be nine and three quarters inches. So I've transferred the important values to this page. Our line length is 102 and three quarters inches, and the port is five and a half by nine and three quarters inches. Now these values here for this simple transmission line enclosure, these are all that define the subwoofer box. I know it might seem like it's super simple, but what you have to remember is now what you need to do is actually come up with some sort of layout for the port. This line here needs to be 102 and three quarters inches long. Now remember that this width here is also the same here, it's also the same here, the same here, here, and here. All those arrows I just drew, those are all equal to the port width of five and a half inches. So this is where the math behind a T-line becomes a challenge because you will need to adjust your layout to make that center line actually equal to the line length. As you can imagine, this is what makes designing a T-line to fit within a particular width or depth difficult because you can't easily shift the dimensions around. This is one of the disadvantages I wanna talk about in a second. So what kind of performance can we expect out of a T-line? Typically we get a relatively flat response from about a half octave below the tuning frequency up to double the tuning frequency. So as an example, if our tuning frequency was 33 hertz, we would have a response from about 25 hertz up to 66 hertz. Keep in mind that this will in fact change once you get the enclosure into the vehicle, but what's awesome about a T-line style enclosure is that the subwoofer can play accurately so low. Now you guys should also know that there's also different types of T-line enclosures. This style that I talked about in this video is relatively simple. There's also tapered style T-lines where the walls aren't actually parallel to each other. They're actually at an angle, and what this can do is it can help prevent the possibility of standing waves. In my experience, I really haven't seen that happen too often, and I find that doing the tapering, if you don't get the mathematics like perfect on the dot, that you're more likely to have issues. Now, what are some of the disadvantages of the T-line? I wanna stress something to you guys because I see people commenting about this all the time. The transmission line is not for SPL or output. I see a lot of people say, oh, the transmission line is the perfect enclosure because it's so loud at every frequency. Not the case. In fact, I got an idea. This is Hertz. Hertz, is it okay if I use that for, uh, for my video? That looks like a yes. So say that each of these pieces of dog food right here represents some audio output. Now let's make a graph here. Let's say that this is frequency, and let's say that this is our output in dB. We only have a certain amount of dog food right here that we can work with. Now let's say that if there's more dog food at a particular frequency, like right here, let's say that that frequency is nice and loud. What happens with something like a ported enclosure is we take some of this energy and we shift it to a location which gives us a peak. Now how wide that peak is, is actually going to vary based on the design of the enclosure, but what you'll notice is I have to take away that energy from somewhere in order to put it here. So if I draw a line here, let's say this is something like our normal ported style box, what would happen is we have 
a lot of output here. This is where we have our good peak SPL for our ported enclosure. Now this is where I think people get confused. They think that by making a transmission line enclosure, you can somehow add more dog food to this pile to fill in down here to get more loud low end notes. And it also fills in more here to get more loud high range notes. But that's not the case guys. What actually happens is you just shift some of this peak away so that everything is more flat. So after moving my dog food here, I'll draw another line and we'll just get the food out of the way. So you can see with the transmission line type response, you can see that we still have the same amount of total energy because this has now been displaced from here to here. So we do have more low end extension, but remember that we're not going to have the loud audible peak that we had with a different style of enclosure like a ported enclosure. Okay, buddy. Something else you wanna make sure that you consider about transmission line enclosures is they are huge. This example that I'm actually building is for only a single 10 inch subwoofer and you can see how big it is. So when you use a larger subwoofer, something like a 15 or an 18, the subwoofer cone area is so large it increases your port area that much more Things can get really big really quickly. Guys, honestly, that box back there, that won't even fit in a sedan. It has trouble even fitting in an SUV. And because of the size of that enclosure, I could honestly make an enclosure for three tens or two twelves within that same footprint. The twelves would have to be a little bit taller, but within that same footprint, and I could definitely get a lot more output with something like a ported enclosure. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the math in this video is very basic and it's just meant to get you started with the concept of a T-line. There is no strict hard rules for how to design a T-line enclosure. In fact, many different designers have their take on what are some of the best practices and what are some of the rules of thumb for this style of enclosure. You really have to understand that the T-line style box is the type of box that even once we build it, we're going to want to do some fine tuning. That's because you have to remember that actually once we take the subwoofer and we put it within a different volume, something different than the free air resonance, its FS within that system is going to change. So as you adjust the line length to match that new FS of the system, it's going to again change the FS. It's just kind of a repeating cycle. And that's actually the reason when a lot of the home audio video guys will build this style of enclosure. They'll include a lot of acoustic stuffing within the actual inside of the box. And the reason they do that is to slow the apparent speed of sound within the enclosure. But again, even adding that changes some of the variables of the box. So again, in summary, this is just one of those styles of design that we can start with some general rules of thumb, but once we build it, we're going to have to to do some, some testing and some additional modifications in order to really improve and finalize the design. Ultimately, I came up with this, which is what I actually used in order to lay out my T-line enclosure that I'm building here. If you guys are interested in something like this, a custom blueprint design so that you can easily build your own subwoofer enclosure, I'd love to help you out. You can check out details to that down in the video description. I hope this video helped you with understanding some of the math so that you can try your own T-line box. And I wanted to remind you guys that I'll be building this in the upcoming video you'll be able to see every step from doing this custom work on the front to actually assembling the thing so if you are new here I would love to have you as a subscriber subscribing is completely free and that way you'll be notified when I upload future videos to my channel if you want to check out some of those other videos I have a couple here on screen a special thanks goes out to John Brian Ali Stephen Jerry EJ Emmanuel Truman James and Colin and the rest of the patreon support team a big thanks to those guys for helping support the making of these videos all right my friends I'll see See you soon in the build video.